Welcome to Contractor Cuts, where we cover the good, the bad, and the ugly of growing a successful contracting company. Welcome back to Contractor Cuts. My name is Clark Turner. I'm Jared Flo. Thank you for joining us again this week. So today we are starting a three-part series. Uh, we're diving into how we get started with our coaching clients. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, we This week we're going to cover the base foundation of your company, right? Getting it set up. Now, if you're set up already for 10 years, 15 years, you've been doing this, we still start with the base foundation of setting up a company because we have uh, we, we always talk about our 280 point checklist and that's what we're going over these next three weeks. Mm-hmm. But in that, there's so many things that guys just don't think about that they haven't set up that day one, we want you to set it up. But if you've been doing this for 10 years, still go back and get this paperwork yeah. in, in place. Right? Well, and this, this is the uh, kind of the it goes along with the title of like it, these are the. These are the fundamentals that we believe are necessary to be able to build a great company. Yep. Right. That's the the overarching kind of theme of like, here's the fundamentals that you need to have in place. If you're trying to create a great company, yep. you got to have these in place. It doesn't matter what your definition of a great company is. If it's just me by myself or it's I'm a multi-state, you know, multi-million dollar, you know, a company, it doesn't matter all of these things apply on the road to get to that spot. That's right. And some of the stuff in our checklist is basic. Like, of course I have a, mm-hmm. a company name. Mm-hmm. Well, let's dive deeper into the company name of why, how, let's make yeah. sure it's the right one. We've it seen some special doing. ones. We've, we've seen some, some <laughs> sentence run on, run on sentence uh-huh. company name. Right? <laughs> and right. so, you know, everything that we have on our checklist and what we're going to go over today is, if you don't have this in place, this is how you need to put it in place. Mm-hmm. If you're starting and launching a company, this podcast is going to be gold. Yep. If you've already had a company established and running, listen through what we're talking about and cherry pick the stuff. They're like, ooh, ooh, I need to do that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that, you know, that, that's what's one of the things that I really love about this checklist. For me, as I'm coaching people, um, somebody who has an established company, but they just can't get over to the next level, that next spot, and they're looking for some help. We start at the base stuff, yep. right? Do you have a company name, right? Yep. Well, let's evaluate what that company name is, right? But there may be on the first list, I don't know, we've got uh, 30, 40, 50, you know, line items on the first list. Mm-hmm. Um, you ha- you may have the majority of those things done, but there's a couple things on that list that are like, oh, dude, I never even thought about that, yeah. right? But they're important for moving from stage to stage to stage to create that growth. Yep. So. I get to start with this and just run through this list with people that are established and say, yep, okay, cool. Next week, let's have that one done. Yep. Right? So That's right. Uh, one other thing I want to say before we get started, this whole base list that we're going through today, this is where we start, guys, on launching with coaching with us. This is kind of the base, what we have to have set up, what you need to be working on over the first month or two, uh, launching in the coaching. Next week, we're going to go into level one contractor, and that's moving – uh, through level one, which is kind of stabilizing your company mm-hmm. to where it's you're moving from, I'm selling me as the product to I've got a built process and product in my company that we're selling that I can now eventually in level two hire in people to help sell my product and right. run my processes the way we've got it set up. And then week three from here is going to be that. Ha- so I've Hire, got it set up. And growth. It's stabilized. Yeah. I've kind of got my processes down. What should I do to make that first hire? How do I grow beyond that? How do I how do I maintain systematically it? Mm-hmm. maintain it and grow it? So that's kind of the three weeks. And what we also wanted to say is base level. What we're covering today, we are starting to give this out for free for the short term yeah. to anyone signing up for our complete uh, or unlimited levels of our software, which is two hundred dollars, one ninety nine, or four ninety nine, depending on what your company needs. But we are going to do the base level because here's the thing: some people don't have the money for coaching and right. we get it. If you're getting started, if you're launching, if you're just trying to get your, your feet underneath you to get, get running, uh, it's, you don't have the money to, to help. So our goal as a company is to have the holistic view of you as a contractor, you as a tradesman, wh- whatever your company is. And so we want to, we want to give this part of it a, a, away for free. So we'll do a free coaching session with you to get the base fundamentals put together to make sure you have these And then once you get going and you start making some cash and you want to go on level one, level two, and and get really in the nitty gritty with the coaching and consulting, then let's talk about that. 
But for us, we want to we want to progressively help you grow to where you're not losing money paying us to help you do it in the beginning because you don't have the money yeah. there. To well, get started. It, it, it's kind of like a uh, it, it's a company health check. Yep. Right here. Here are some fundamental foundational principles. Yep. Do you have them in place or not? Yeah. Right. And you, you within, you know, 45 minutes or so, an hour, we can go through all of those things and you may come out going, hey, you know what? I'm, I'm actually doing well. I've got all those things set up. Or you might come out saying, dude, I haven't thought about those things. That, that's some great insight. Yeah. Let me get these things executed. I see where that thing has a future value. Where we want your mindset is first off separating your personal and your business, mm -hmm. right? We see so many guys coming in that have a single credit card that they're putting groceries on they're they're putting job site materials on yeah. right? and and that is that is a very difficult making more bookkeeping work for yourself in terms of at the end of the year with taxes what is a write-off what isn't uh and then it starts easily lumping in those those personal expenses in and then all of a sudden uh, i might have some tax issues yeah. right and so yeah. we, we want to separate it out for a couple of different reasons one to keep everything above board, to make sure that I'm not of doing course. anything illegal uh, in terms of business write-offs that shouldn't be. But more importantly, we want to look at the long-term vision of the company. And I want to start this credit account where I can start separating out my project managers having their own cards there and, and business expenses as I grow the company. So that's that's the first mindset. So everything we're about to talk about is kind of separating out business, personal, that, that sort of thing. Also, efficiencies that, that we want to dive deep into. We want to set up as much automation as possible. Mm -hmm. I want to spend time now so I'm not spending time later. Yep. Right? I think that's one of the things that we see, guys. That they're just going to be the engine, and they're going to do everything every single time the same way. Like I just said with the credit cards, if I am constantly going into QuickBooks to separate all my credit cards, that's business, that's personal, that's business. Why? have a business credit card, it will sync up, you will categorize it within the business, but let's not waste time separating it out, right? I know everything that's on that card is a business expense, yep. right? And I, I can I can move forward, I don't have to separate out, you know, the, the personal stuff. Yep, so getting started going into the foundations with what we do, uh, walking you through the checklist, uh, There, we're trying to separate the the difference of doing work mm -hmm. versus building a company, right? Right. What when we're entering the systemizing and planning of what we want to start doing today is most guys have the mentality: I'm doing work. I'm a sheet rock installer. I'm a painter. I'm a carpenter. What, whatever you are, I'm a general contractor. Either way, you have been selling your time, doing work for people, and getting paid for the time you're spending doing it. Yep. And it's a very fine line between that and starting to build a company that is that is that product, mm -hmm. right? And so everything we're doing in this section is separating those out and making, some of it is is pretty obvious, but it's also a, a line of demarcation of these things on this side are all the business and what, what I'm gonna be working on and I'm building these foundational, uh, the paperwork and systems that I'm starting to plant now that will eventually grow into where we're headed. Yeah, well, and uh, some of the some of the reason for that in the in the base launch area is that you're 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 transitioning from a like you said a doer, mm -hmm. right? That you're a, a doer most of the time is just singularly focused on what's in front of us, right? I'm executing those things, and when I execute those things, I get paid. Building a business, you can't build a business and just execute um, reaction, right? Or reaction wise, right? You have to have forethought. You have to be thinking about where do I want to go with this company? Yeah. What do I want to do with it? Um, do you know? Do do I want to retire from it in five years, ten years, fifteen years? Do I want to try and sell it? Do I want to offer it to my family and my kids? Do I want to build a family-run business? Whatever, whatever it is, but you need to be kind of having the forethought of this is what I want to do with the company. And the reason why in the base lots we start um, uh, kind of prepping for the separation of the of that stuff is because when you move into level one, that's when you're really putting the feet behind the execution of that separation and changing from I'm selling me to I'm selling a company to yeah. my clients, yeah. right? And so that's the, the this is kind of the prep of getting towards running that direction because that's where you go next when you get into level one. Well, also with what you're saying is, is great. The the where I'm going, what 10 years from now looks like, five years from now, even two years from now, 
having that knowledge day one and understanding, and that's going to change, right? In a year from now, it might change. You might go a different course. You might start doing something else. That's fine. But having that long-term vision of where you're going allows systemizing and planning. And so those two things, systemizing and planning are what we have to do. And, And a great example if I am working for just, I just need some cash now, I'll probably go work for my dad's company in a year or two. We don't need to invest our time and money in building systems for hiring people in Correct. this company. Correct. Everything that we're doing is how much do you want to invest to make this what it needs to be at the end goal, right? And so I don't want you to invest in something that's not going to return on that investment. So if you, most guys have this mentality of, I'm not thinking long term, so there's no long term investment I need to make. They're not actually thinking that, but that's subconsciously what's happening. And so they view dollars in, dollars out as great. I made $8,000 this month. That means I can spend $8,000 this Mm -hmm, month. mm -hmm. Or why would I take three hours this week to start planning out a project management process? I'm not going to hire anyone. Like what, who am I going to train this process to? I might work a little bit for myself on the process to make my product better to my customers, but you don't need to spend the same amount of time if you're not going to hire somebody, yep. right? And so let's look at what you're going to build before we decide what you are or not going to invest in what you're building. Well, and here's a tangible example of that is, you know, uh, let's say you, you if, if you look at here's what I want to do in the future, here's where I want to go, mm-hmm. right? But um, you, you know, I want to go multi-state. But you create the name of the company and register the name as the company as Dallas Area Construction, Atlanta Area Construction. But you're eventually wanting to go multiple states. Yeah. Well, now when you go that direction, you've now got to recreate and rebrand the name because you've specified it to a state. Yeah. Right. Or something like, um, you know, best renovations. Right. Um, well, am I going to be doing renovations forever or am I also going to be doing remediation and commercial work yeah. and right? Am, am I going to create variations that doesn't, that the name no longer fits? Yeah. Our, our first company was home solutions. Yep. And now we're, you know, we're getting into commercial and new builds and that doesn't fit for right. a home solutions company. Yeah. Right. If I'm, if I'm doing multifamily or doing some sort of commercial work, that's not a home solutions company. So again, going into picking a name, that's everything that we're doing. A great example is picking the name. Everything we're doing is based around this long-term plan. And again, a long-term plan for you might be, I just want to make some cash for the next year or two years. We might be moving. My wife's got a good job. We're not going to do this. Great. Well, let's build it around that plan. There's still a plan there and let's make you money. But I also, you know, if you have a retirement plan, you're putting money aside today for 30 years from now. Right. If you don't have a retirement plan, you're spending the money today where in 30 years you don't have it. Mm-hmm. And so understanding where am I going and what do what's the minimum I can invest to be able to really take this to that level is the mindset we need to have because I want to invest as much as needed but at the same time I'm doing this I'm building this business to make money, to pull yeah. money out and to pay myself and to enjoy the life that I that I'm building. So I want to invest the least amount, but at the same time, I'm going to invest every penny I need, I can to get it to that next level. Right. And so what are we investing in and why are we investing in it? And let's, let's filter all of these decisions that we make in, in the base level, setting things up around where it's going. Right. And that's, I, I, I think that's a, that's a great kind of caveat into, you know, what, what is the point and purpose that as I'm walking people, brand new people coming into the coaching program and I'm walking people through this, I think there are two main objectives in this base level, right? The first is what you just talked about. In the base level, whether you're a startup company or an existing company who's doing kind of, let me check and see where I'm at. All of these different things, for the most part, you're making decisions that can impact the future of the company. So let's have that forethought Think through where do I want to go as far as I know right now. I'm sure the trajectory of that may change down the road, but at least for right now, here's what I want out of this company. And so let's make decisions about the name, what, how my marketing is going to work, how I set up operating agreements and all of those things. I'm going to set those things up for the future decisions that I think I'm going to be making. Mm -hmm. So that's one, having that forethought of making decisions. And the second is, we have found that if there there are three fundamental things that we call the base fundamentals or the idea of building a house on sand or rock, 
right? If I build it on rock, something sturdy, once I have those in place, the building blocks can go and it's going to, it's, it's going to be a stable company. And they can expand, build up, right. build out. Right. Yep. So, and so that's, that's kind of the two main things that we focus on in this area is future decisions or future direction are going to affect my, the decisions I'm making today. So let's, let's look at that. And then here are the three fundamentals. Let's start working to get those in play um, because they're going to play a major factor in the next level and where you're going to go in that next level. Yep. So those three, let's dive into those because that's where we're we're going to be spending some time today. The first one is, and we've covered these in past podcasts, right? Uh, To name all three of them up front, time management, organization and financials. And so every single step that we do in base level, level one, level two, level three, and level four are are, are different levels of size of construction company and growth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All three of those are assessing those three base fundamentals at each level. Yeah. Right. And so level one, we're just trying to control our calendar. Time management, I want to be in control of my calendar, not my customers, not my, uh, my labor, uh, they aren't going to run my calendar. I'm going to be in charge of right. it. What does that mean? How do we do that? How do we lay that out? We talk through that and, and really kind of define what is and is not owning your calendar. When do we have flex times? When do we have, I'm sorry, I can't go there because I've got to be working on X, Y, and Z times. In the last couple of podcasts, we actually covered a lot of that yeah. uh, in terms of what I should be doing as office time and what I should be doing uh, on the job sites. And so Understanding the office time, that's going to be protected calendar time that I control, that I can say yes or no, because I know what my day should look like and what I have to get done. Yeah. Well, and one of the things that I will say about that is that, you know, uh, with, with all the people that I've had the opportunity to coach, the ones that are the most successful, the ones that make the most rapid forward movement are the ones that apply that principle immediately and work to stick with it the best as possible. Yep. Um, because everything else that you need to be doing in your business is going to require you to be able to be in control of your own time. And so uh, that that's just the ones that struggle, the ones that, uh, you know, not uh, they just don't go up the, the road as fast are the ones that are letting everything else run their time and they're, they, they say to me, well, I, I'm, I'm trying to do my calendar, but, I, you know, things just keep coming up. Um, and so that's just a major thing of yeah. getting that concept of your job in this level is take control of your time. Yep. Right. And we when, when we're coaching, we have specific ways that we teach people how to do that. What's the beginning of it so that we can kind of start it and then we dial it in where by the end of it, I've got guys that have almost every hour of their weeks planned out, organized, and they know exactly what they're doing when they're doing and where. Yep. Yep. Right. Well, and what we hear most often is I'm just not a calendar person. Mm -hmm. I'm just not, I, I just, I don't like to be nailed down to a calendar. I kind of shoot from the hip and I'm better that way. I can figure out what I'm doing on the fly. Great. Yeah. You're not going to grow a company that way. Nope. You know, look at any big company. That's not how it works. Right. And so you can do that in your personal time. And I'm a great example of this. Like I I am not an organized calendaring person, but when it comes to building a company, it's like, okay, I, I can have self-control and teach myself these skills and it, it's harder for me than a guy that's super organized, but I can still do it. And yeah. if I can learn you know, that skill, You know you're not good at it, yes. but you also know I have to. Yeah. Like well, it just, it is what it is because, you know, this is something that I told somebody earlier this week. You have to have this piece of it because if you don't have this piece of it, people are going to view you as unreliable. Yep. And the bigger your company gets, the more people that are going to be relying on you. And you do not want to be known as the leader of the company who's unreliable. Yeah. Yeah. And this is the principle. This is the the number one principle that will define whether you're reliable or not. Well, and, and successful people see something that they're not good at and they don't they don't say it's an excuse. I'm just not good at that. Right. What they say is I'm not good at that. So I'm going to double down. So I'm more well-rounded. So mm-hmm. the areas that I'm not at a hundred percent, I'm a great salesman. I'm a hundred percent. I don't need to work hard on that. 
time management and organization is probably my weakest link. So I'm going to double down and get that up to a 90 percenter. Yeah. And so then I am unstoppable, right? That's a successful mindset mm-hmm. of I am going to, I'm going to work harder on the stuff I'm not good at instead of making it an excuse of why yeah. I'm not doing it. Well, and I also know, I, I know some executives that run companies of big companies and they, they suck at that. Yeah. They're horrible at it. And they've been successful enough that they literally have an assistant that what their assistant does is organizes their time for them because yep. they know they're not going to be good at it, right? And so they have a person that does it for them. In our current you know, status as a general contracting company, you got to learn how to do it, yep. right? You just got to learn how to do it. And it's not difficult. Yeah. And, um, don't, and don't say your wife is going to be your assistant on that because <laughs> that that's no go. Uh, next, organization. Uh, software has to have a snapshot of every job at any given time, right? That's that's kind of the baseline that we're looking for when we're getting started is mm-hmm. I, I'm going to do the work to where I have a snapshot. And again, I don't if I'm just running jobs by myself and I'm just gonna be there to, to make money today, I don't really have to have it organized in that way. I, I know five jobs, six jobs, seven jobs that are going on and they're all in my head and I can handle it. Yeah. I don't have to keep the software as updated as I would require an employee mm-hmm. to do. Mm-hmm. But Again, if we're looking at planning for the future and how I want people to run in this company, I'm going to keep the software organized. I'm going to upload my pictures. I'm going to do the documentation. I'm going to make sure all my change orders go through there. Uh, And that protects your money and the CYA stuff to where customers blame you and you've got it all backed up because you sent emails through the software to them and all that stuff. But again, getting organized through how I do my software, every single job card, how I'm going to keep my paperwork in my office, all sorts of things that we're going to talk through with organization. Getting that set up now is unnecessary, but an investment in the future. Yep. Right. I, it, it's. It, I mean, I think it's necessary, but I, I can. You can get by without it. Mm-hmm. Right. And so what we're trying to do is saying, yeah, I can get by without doing that, but I'm going to invest the time where I spend an extra 30 minutes a week looking at the jobs. I'm yep. going to spend an extra hour and a half diving into my finances. I'm going to spend a a little bit more time to set up how I onboard a a new vendor or sub to get their paperwork. And this, I'm going to file it and now it's done. I got a system for that. I got a process of how that's done and I don't have to waste time on it. Well, and the the potential byproduct of not or consequence of not doing that, Um, because like you said, it's not, you don't have to, right? Um, there's, There's two consequences that I see. Either when you hire somebody, you're going to be creating expectations of how they you want them to run their software yeah. that you have no idea whether they're unreasonable or not because yeah. you haven't put in the time of doing that job to know if it's reasonable. Yeah. Right. Well, I think what's helpful about our coaching program, being part of Project Alliance, is we will show you level one, level two, level three, level four. Mm-hmm. And so we can say, listen, I understand doing the software the way we're trying to force you to do it right now feels like a lot of extra work. Look at what level one has to do. Right. Look at level two, because every single level, there's a higher, higher focus on each of these. So mm-hmm. you have to be super organized now before you can get to a spot that you can duplicate yourself. Yeah. Right. Until until there's a person I want to duplicate, I can't duplicate myself. Right. right? There's not a, a way to duplicate me until this stuff is being handled. So yeah. base level you got to have a good snapshot of every job in your software. You got to have some minor basic processes in place and be able to keep yourself organized around it and owning your time as well. Well, in these three categories, time management is the ability. It's, it's creating the ability to execute, yep. right? The other two software and organization and finances are about vision. How do I know that things are going well on my job? Yeah. How do I know that my crews are getting paid accurately? How do I know if I've got enough money, if I've spent too much money, am I, right? Yeah. How much profit my company is making? And all of those things are the things that you're going to use to be able to make decisions yeah. of growth, change, you know, whatever in the future. So that's the, these three things are so important because I have to be able to execute. Um, but I also have to be able to have vision in the company. And these last two are how you actually create the ability to see what's going on. Yep. Which leads into the finances. And we're about to dive into the, the, the coaching, uh, 280 point growth path checklist. But the last one in these three that we're, that we harp on every single level is financials. So where as a baseline, do we want our financials? 
I want to know every dollar coming in and every dollar coming out. Yep. And what does that mean? I don't want a pot system. I don't want a bank account that I collect checks from people, throw it in there. When I got to spend money, I'm going to go to that bank account and just pull money out. Yeah. That is the baseline of financials. And that seems so difficult, but mm -hmm. it isn't. It really isn't if you start setting it up in the front end. Well, simplifying what you're saying is that I should never be surprised when I look at my bank account. Yes. I should never think that I have $5,000 and I go in and realize that I've only got a hundred. Yeah. I should never be surprised by it. I should or vice know. versa. Correct. Right? Yeah. And, and hopefully, hopefully the other yeah, way. But, right? but again, the surprise is the flag as opposed yeah. to, okay, well, I want, uh, you know, you're not at a casino being like, okay, big money, big right. money, no whammies. Let's open it. Right. And yeah. it's, it's not that it is a, okay, right now we've got $52,658 because of that, this is for this job, this is for this job, this is our profits, mm -hmm. our savings. Mm -hmm. Now, getting to that level to where you are a CFO for your company, that doesn't come yet. Yeah. Right now, and when we're talking base level, I want you mostly spending your time on looking at your jobs. The, every dollar going out is tied to a line item. Mm -hmm. Every dollar coming in is tied to that line item. And I know when the money's coming in, I know when the money's coming out, I'm not, and this is the leaky bucket that guys have is, you know, I bid it at 35%. And at the end of the day, when we're, you know, I, I passed it all to my CPA and it looks like I made about 3% profit. Yeah. It's like, well, why? I don't know. Yeah. Well, then there's no way to dive in and fix it if we don't have the why behind well, it. The, the, the other thing is I, I can, I can hear people saying, well, I don't know. I don't know when my guys are going to cash the checks that I gave them. Yeah. I can I can hear people saying that, yeah. right? That's where QuickBooks comes into yeah, play, for sure. right? That's where there are two balances under your checking account in QuickBooks. There's the actual cash in your bank account, and then there's the available money for you to spend. You have $10,000 in your bank account. I cut a $5,000 check on Friday. Then I only have $5,000 in that QuickBooks balance. So I don't have to worry about what's in my bank account, I start operating off of that. The beauty is, is that our software, this is where that creating efficiency and automation comes into play. Our software, when it comes to adding clients, adding vendors, creating invoices, receiving payments from your clients on those invoices, bills for your vendors and paying those vendors. All of that information is done in one place. It's done in your software and it automatically pushes it to your QuickBooks, categorizes it, organizes it. There's nothing you need to do with it, yep. right? So that's by using our software and having it connected to QuickBooks, it's gonna automate that stuff that you're afraid of, yep. that you're afraid you're gonna click the wrong button, but it's also going to make it where you have an accurate number in your QuickBooks of what money do I have to spend? Yep. How much money is out there waiting to be cashed, right? You'll be able to do that then that gives you the vision to be able to make decisions. Can I spend this money or not? Here, right. a great example of what you just said too, of efficiency and systemizing at the same time. Mm -hmm. When I, I have one, two, three main street, I have a paint line item that I dispatched out to my crew and they, I go maybe right now when I'm getting started, I'm still hand cutting checks on job sure. sites. That's fine. Do sure. that. That's fine. Mm -hmm. I'm hand cutting checks. I go walk the job site. Hey, the paint's all done. Acme Painting, thank you for doing it. Here's a check, $5,000. I can sit down at my software, say, Acme Painting on this line, yep, done. Market complete, 100%. And then I can say, check number one, two, three. Process that, I just hit save. I paid them by hand cutting them a check. Mm -hmm. All that dumps into your QuickBooks and manages your QuickBooks for yep. you. Now, I've got a systematic way though, set up to where I pay Acme Painting by marking it complete. Yeah, I've, I'm just hand cutting a check and I write the check number in there. When I start systemizing and growing and have project managers doing this, I am now, when I mark it complete, Acme Painting, $5,000 complete, it sits in my pending payments. And so I can print checks straight from the ProStruck 360 software. Mm -hmm. So I can, all I got to do is say, yep, oh, uh, hand cut or print, uh, print. I'm going to click the print and it's going to print you out the checks. Yep. If I'm hand cutting it, I click hand cut, I put the check number in and it processes it. Either way, super simplistic. But doing it the right way by hand cutting the check, marking that you did that is building that process to where everything's organized. All my numbers are accurate. I know exactly how much money I made or lost on this job. Mm -hmm. And it stops me from paying that extra money that I shouldn't have to pay. That's right? right. I owed Acme $5,000 and they're like, actually, you know, we spent extra two days out here. I need six. I appreciate that. But the work order was for five and mm -hmm. I can't mark it complete for six because 
I only have five to pay, right? And so right. it stops that leaky bucket of money going out as well as starting your systems for when you hire people and start growing your company. Yeah. Yeah. So that, and, you know, when I think it, a lot of guys that I talk to when we talk about financials, every, I mean, I, I, I almost a hundred percent of the guys are like, ah, I know I need to, yeah. I have a QuickBooks is most, yeah. most of the time what people say it always is on the back burner. Um, on a weekly basis, there's probably 20 to 25 things that you need to be doing in QuickBooks to keep the information accurate, adding in new clients, adding in new subs, you know, making payments, cutting checks. There's probably 20 to 25 things that you need to be doing on a weekly basis. By, by doing all of this stuff in your software, it takes that down to probably five. Right. At the, there's, there, yeah. the, at the most, there's five things that you need to execute are on a business level in QuickBooks. So you've you've uh, made what you need to be doing in QuickBooks so much less time and a lot simpler for you to be able to do. So the, it, it, everybody's afraid of QuickBooks because it's accounting software. They don't know what to do. They know that they can screw themselves up if they do it incorrectly. And so they the, everybody's hesitant to get into yeah. it. That's why it's so valuable to have. And, I, you know, this isn't like trying to pitch, you know, whatever, but it's just what I really believe. Having the software, the way that it functions, where it, instead of having to figure out how and understand how to function 25 different things every week, I just need to understand a couple things. Yeah. Right. And, yeah. And, and, and when I'm limited on my time and I'm working on my time management and most of my time is in the field, I don't have four hours a week to spend or an hour every day or whatever. Literally, you could do everything that you need to do at max an hour a week. Yep. Right. Yep. So it makes it that yep. automation in the software well, really helps you create that system and the process to be able to have your finances in order so that you can make educated decision on the money. Yeah. The, the main thing you're doing in QuickBooks is syncing up your bank account and credit cards and, mm -hmm. and identifying what jobs you spent that money on. Yep. And our software goes in and sucks that information in the software so you have that there too right so we teach you here's the one two three things you got to do in quickbooks you don't have to be a quickbooks master yeah just do these one little things and then run your jobs like you normally do in our software we handle everything for you mm -hmm. pro Truck 360 is literally a, a a fast forward to not having to learn quickbooks but it manages it for you so you can just pass your quickbooks to your cpa right. at the end of the year right. so right uh, I, I agree totally so let's let's dive into uh, kind of the the different sections that we're gonna that we run through in the base level, the checklist stuff. Now that we know time management, organization, and financials are what we are are focused around. Yeah. This is kind of in the weed stuff that we want to cover that we cover during your first coaching session, really the first month or two that you come into the program is getting these base fundamentals mm -hmm. every box checked. So the, at the very beginning of that, the, the the first thing that we go over is just the, the the company decision, setting up the company. Yeah. Right. Do you have a company name? Do you have a tax ID number? Do you have um, uh, articles of incorporation? Do you have insurance? Yep. Right. And we dive into okay, what kind of insurance do you have? Do yep. you have this kind? Are you do you have employees? Okay. Do you Let's have look at your state? Do you have, Let's look at this. Right. Let's look at regulations. You know? Yeah. Um. And then a after that part of it, you know, and that's that's the spot where we'll go in and say, okay, you made these decisions on an existing company. Uh, you've made the decisions. Where are you going? Yeah. Right. What's your goal? What's your long term goal? Does do those decisions? match up yeah. with what your long-term goal was. Uh, I think along with that, we see a lot of partnerships and we're, you know, one thing that we see missing all the time is, is a operating agreement. Mm -hmm. And so we'll sit down with you and say, okay, this is what should be in it. This is what shouldn't let's have those conversations that you guys haven't had yet. Let's right. talk about what happens if you die. Mm -hmm. What does he get? Is yeah. it going to your wife? Is your son going to be running the company? Right. All those things that you haven't really thought about. We want to walk through mm -hmm. to make sure that there's no stress three, four, five years from now, Correct. right? If you want to leave and go do your own thing, you get called by Jesus and you need to be, become mm -hmm. a missionary to China. Yep. Great. What happens to our shares? You right. can't just take half the company and run. Right. Right. Like, so we need to talk through all that and lay it out. And we've got operating agreements that we'll share with you, but really we like to customize that around you mm -hmm. and your partnership or you by yourself, as well as uh, it, a one man show operating agreement is still important. Right. You need it for a lot of loans. You need it for other things, but also it's something that where if you do take on partners in the future or you die and you need to pass it to someone else or I retire, whatever it is, it's all good stuff to have. Mm -hmm. But in a partnership, it's a 
no like no discussion you have to have it most people that i talk to don't have that no right no, I don't. Uh, even even ones that have partners yeah well you say you got an operating agreement yeah yeah, yeah. i mean we we kind of have a plan uh, what, well, what is what does that mean mm-hmm. who yeah. who gets paid what how do you take you know all, all that stuff so that's kind of the the basics of we start running through a lot of those company basics no. business licensing all that stuff we kind of have a checkbox for every single one again ein number Obviously, you need to you need to have some sort of company set up. Let's have a checkbox to make sure that you have yep. that. So we have all of that stuff mm-hmm. in that first section. Yeah. So the next section is um, how do companies how how do clients find me? How do they get Client, in touch with me? Public facing. Yeah. What does that mean? What yeah. does that look like? Do you have a website? Do you have um, Google My Business set up? Do yeah. you have business cards? Do you want business cards? Yep. Are you going to create flyers? Are you going to have merch? Are you going to do hats? Are you going to do shirts? Do you have cell phones? Right. All of those things that are they, they really seem like common sense. Yeah. But we ha- again, just like the tax ID number, we have a list to go through. Hey, do you have this? Do you have this? OK, you do have this. Do you have a policy around that thing? Right. Do you have like how that's going to function? You said that your goal is to be four or five project managers in. Well, if you have cell phones and credit cards that you're going to be handing out to those people, what's the rules? Yeah. Right. So we walk through all of those type of things when it when it comes to um, if we want a pipeline, um, people need to know how to get in touch with us. So how do we do that? What What are the things that we have in place? Social media. Facebook accounts, yeah. all of that stuff. Well, and and a lot of a lot of the stuff that we talk about in that section is you have got some of that set up by default, and let's assess why it's that way. So mm-hmm. uh, what I'm saying is, let's say your name is Jim Goldsmith, right? Yeah. And so you were like, yeah, you know, I'm doing some construction. I might do some development work. So I'm going to be Goldsmith Development and Construction Inc. Yeah, that's my company name. Okay. So set up an email. Well, I already have an email. It's Goldsmith Construction and Development Inc. at gmail.com. Mm-hmm. That is a run on sentence mm-hmm. that no one's going to remember that. 50% of the people are going to misspell it when they're typing it in. Yep. And it's an at Gmail. So mm-hmm. let's talk about how we get that shorter. Let's go. Can we find a, a website that's gold? Like for us, uh, we, we like to add company or I'm sorry, city tagline. So. Uh, you know, we have uh, our, our construction company, ProServe ATL. Our right. Austin is ProServe ATX. And that right. way we've expanded and it feels local, but it's a very short URL. Right. So now you the can... The odds of somebody misspelling it or not being able to get to where we're pointing them yep. is, is slim. As short as I can make it, but also personalized to what I'm doing. Uh, so really building it that way to where we can shorten it. So we come in and say, okay... Can we, you know, if it's if it's Goldsmith Construction Development, great. Can we can we call it? Uh, can we buy the domain GoldsmithATL.com? Right. Goldsmith Construction, right? There's something. At how short can we get it? Now you can use that full name when they land on your website, but let's get it as short as possible. So then your first name at that short website yeah. uh, domain name. But that, I mean, our 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 original company, ProServe Home Solutions. Yeah, people. People would type in ProServe Home Solution. Yeah. People would misspell the word solutions. Yeah. Right? And it's just a very long URL. My right? first email was ProServe Home Solutions at gmail.com. Correct. That was the very yeah. first one. And it's like, it's very unprofessional. And you are as big as peop- as you seem to people. Yeah. Right? And well, so- and you didn't want to have Clark at ProServe Home Solutions.com. Well, that was my second email. That's why, yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, it's it's being able to make it where it makes sense, but it's it's concise, easy to remember, yep. right? That's just kind of the goal. So, so we we go through yeah. a lot of a lot of that type of we stuff. We dive into that stuff. We look, we talk about you know cheap simple ways to get a website built, cheap simple ways to get a logo done if you don't have that. Going through kind of how to set up uh, outside facing, how to get reviews, how to do all that. Stuff. It's very simple. Yeah. You can go Google all this stuff. It's simple, but you need to make sure that you dot every I and cross every T because mm-hmm. how I set it up today, uh, a great example, your, your URL and website uh, combined with your Google, my business, the longer that that is, that is uh, intact mm-hmm. the, since when you start it, the better you're going to do with SEO. Yeah. Now, I know we're talking kind of longer down the road, but if I switch my email, my URL. The longer it is, the more points of value it gets, yep. which means that your people are going to be able to find you easier. Yep. So That's it, what that means. If you switch your URL in three years from now, you're starting over with a lot mm-hmm. of that SEO stuff. You yeah. have you have no um, internet credit. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 
Uh, so going through that stuff, we kind of have a bunch of different things from business cards and phones. And we, we want to talk through every single one. And some of the stuff doesn't matter. Some of the stuff's like, hey, wait on that. You don't you don't have money to buy company shirts? No problem. You're going to wear a polo. Look really sharp when you show up. Yeah. Uh, and so we, we got to talk through that section uh, of the check boxes. The, the next section is going through ownership documents, right? Yep. Yep. You know, uh, again, we, we talked about an operating agreement, but there's also things that go a little further than that. Let's say you're starting a company with you and your brother and you guys are 50-50. Right. Let's figure out how that pay. How is pay work? Yeah. How does um, uh, what's the difference between a salary and ownership? Ownership draws. Mm-hmm. Are we going to do, you know, ha- figuring that out? So, again, like we do with everything, so long as there's clear written out expectations, we have something to go back to for accountability and remembering. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's the right way we said. So we'll spend time kind of going through those things and and also defining based on how we've set up the pay yeah. what are the owners owners duties yeah. what are their responsibilities yeah we right? separate you out from owner and operator mm-hmm. and so we start saying okay this is what you're getting paid for an operator mm-hmm. and then this is how distributions happen and we don't have to go too deep into it but even if you're a one-man show how do you take money when you take money and how are we going to do it let's yep. look at that and break that down that's kind of a lot of the consulting we're doing is Let's take as much money out that we can that doesn't harm the company and leaves enough in to grow. Yeah. Right. And so how do we do that where we feel, okay, it's safe to do that. Take that money. Hey, give yourself a raise because once we get to this spot, that's when you'll start making more. What's the minimum you need to survive? What's your what's your total overhead as a as a human, whether it's your family or as a you know single person, whatever it is. Let's work backwards from there and figure out how much work you need to be doing on a monthly basis, right. revenue-wise, to hit those numbers. So we start diving into some of that stuff day one because if you can't survive, this isn't going to work. It doesn't matter. Right. <laughs> right. Right. So the next uh, the next section after we talk through all the ownership stuff is is money finances. Yep. Yep. Um, and in this spot, one of the one of the first questions that we're going to ask and go through is: Do you have QuickBooks? Yeah. If not, then here's what you need to get, yep. right? Yep. Um, if you don't have QuickBooks and you don't know anything about it, you need to get it. And then you, we would recommend that you sign up for a training. Yep. We can guide you in some basics, but we are not, you know, QuickBooks certified. You need to go pay for some training so yep. that you know, you understand how to function QuickBooks. Yep. After that, we're going to be talking about bank accounts, credit cards, vendor accounts, yep. you know, your Home Depots, your Lowe's, your Sir Williams, can you get credit in those things? Should you start with a base level thousand dollar yeah. account at Home Depot just to start building credit? But before we go to that, the first question I'm going to ask when it comes to accounts is, do you have a business banking account? Yeah. Well, I have a bank account. Well, is it your personal? Yeah. Well, yeah, it's a personal account. Okay, then we need to create a separate one. We yeah. need to have a bank account that is under your company name, right? And then you think through stuff like in the future, Who's going to be managing this? Yeah. Who's going to be signers on this? So if there's two partners, do you want both people being signers or not? Yeah. Right. Um, same thing with credit cards. Yeah. We're going to have company credit cards. Am I going to pass those out to future employees? Okay, that might change the type of card that I choose to buy. Yeah. Right. So again, when it comes to finances, it's processing through. Here are the things that you may need or definitely do need in your financial corner. And how are those going to affect the future direction of the company? Let's yeah. go ahead and think about that and That's set right. it up that way. L- looping back to one more thing about QuickBooks, I, th- I think we get asked a lot, you know, should I do I need QuickBooks? I'm not really doing it. It's just oh, I'm a one man show where I'll get that later. Mm-hmm. One thing you need to know is that oh, when yeah, you're yeah. starting a company, you are responsible for giving 1099s to all of your vendors and subcontractors at the end of the year. And if you don't have a way to track that, they are going to be hunting you down and you're going to spend 40 hours trying to go through all of your paperwork to figure mm-hmm. out how much the 1099. And what a 1099 is, it's saying, hey, I paid this vendor $50,000 this year, which is telling the government, I don't owe you the taxes on the 50, talk to him. Right. And so the more I can 1099 and make sure that I show where my money went mm-hmm. is less tax liability I've got to pay. Right. If I don't send any 1099s out, I've got to pay the taxes on every penny I collected. Yep. And so the 1099s alone is the reason to get QuickBooks because right. in our software, you build a job, you send work orders, you pay the guys. It's tracking it on the QuickBooks that, that's connected to it. So yeah. even if you're doing nothing in QuickBooks, get it, tie it into our software, mm-hmm. and then it's going to keep all of your numbers for you. You don't have to touch it if you don't have to. We want you to. Yeah. We want you to do some, some specific things to really keep it accurate and be mm-hmm. able to manage your money. But at minimum, 
get it and tie it into the software so we can help you manage all of the end of the year tax stuff and, and all of that. Right. Right. No, that's that's a that's a good point. Um, so lastly, um, is is software. Yeah. Right. We just check in about software. Second to last. No, second to last. Um, there is um, this is the spot where we're just learning, educating. Yeah. We're we're training on the software. Here's what you need to be doing. You need to be you, you need to be utilizing the software to um, record all the information yeah. about your jobs. Right. When you're sending estimates. When the client said yes, you know, executing the work, you know, uh, sending out work orders, invoicing, all of that stuff, you need to be working towards understanding how to do all of that stuff. So there's there's a couple of different things that we go through some some specific points of do you know how to do this in the software? Do you know how to do this? Okay, you don't have you watched all of the education videos To, to be perfectly honest. It's frustrating for me when I get a bunch of people calling me about how do I do this in the software and there's a resource that they haven't even used, yeah. right? You've got a resource to be able to educate yourself on your tool. Yeah. Well, and we'll do know. free training. Show up to the training. We'll, of course. We'll get you onboarded. We'll do a one-on-one onboarding. Show up to that and you won't have those questions. Right. Because it's a simplistic software. Yeah. I mean, it, it's very intuitive to the way that construction runs because we've built it inside of a, a construction company. Right. But along with, with what you're saying about that, Software is not a just a tool, and most guys view it as a tool. What's the cheapest tool that I can buy mm-hmm. that I can just uh, that I can build estimates in and get get paid, right? And what we want and why we focus on software on in the coaching side is it is a a systematic way to build your processes. Yeah. So your processes run through this tool. It's not just a tool. It is where the the core of your company is held because. This is how we run things, and, and the software runs systematically through a job from mm-hmm. first intake as a lead all the way through final payment. It goes through all your statuses, and it tracks everything for you to where you're not spending all this time on a yellow pad and on you know seven different softwares trying to do my Gantt charts over here and my estimates over here. And I'm receiving my payments over here, right? We've got all of that built into the software to where it's a one-stop shop. I, it, I send an invoice and payment comes in through uh, your your payment portal and you do nothing. It right. processes in the software and passes the QuickBooks. All of that stuff is about efficiencies, right? You can buy any tool. Using it the right way is how you get super efficient and start saving time and money as a company. Yep, yep. Last thing that we need to cover in, mm-hmm. in, in the baseline is pipeline. Mm-hmm. We start looking at where are you getting jobs from. Well, yep. I got four four different jobs right now. Great. Where did you get those? Where are they coming from? How are you going to get the next ones? What's your target market? What's the demographic we're going after? How do we reproduce bringing in these jobs? And we start coaching and and consulting and figuring out what is the best way strategy moving forward. And and a lot of guys have it figured out, Mm -hmm. but it's also you have the next month or two or three figured out and you're just hoping that that just keeps happening. Let's get a, let's build a systematic way to build your pipeline. Well, and I also have a lot of guys that I talk to when it comes to pipeline that they do everything. Yeah. Anything that comes in their door, they do it. It's not that they specifically specialize in it. They just anything that comes in their door, they're doing this custom thing over here, and then this one they're doing like this one off. I'm going to install a light bulb, yeah. and then this other one they're doing a commercial, and this other one they're doing you know like anything that comes in their door, and so they've got a pipeline of business, but there's none of it that they're kind of hyper focused on specializing. Yep. Right. And so there there's some of that, that looking through the pipeline of saying, do you want to be just kind of a jack of all trades, master of none of them, or um, and and developing leads for all of that stuff is really difficult because it's in all different angles. Yeah. If I look at, you know what we do right now at this time as I'm growing my business, I want to be in commercial, but I've got leads and renovations, so that's where I'm going to focus. I'm going to become an expert in renovations, but that also means I can dial in on how do I get more renovations? Yeah. How do I get more homeowners? How do I, you know? Yeah. And then later on down the road, once that's humming like a top, let's look at, Diversifying. Let's yeah. get into a different, you know, different division, right? But yep. that's a place when it comes to pipeline that we're going to process through at this base launch of what type of business do you have coming in? Where are your leads coming in? And does it make sense yeah. for you in the way that you're getting leads for it to be able to become a consistent level of, of yeah. business coming in? That's it. If yep. you want, if you want this paperwork, if you want to walk through all of these checks to make sure you have it currently set up the way you need it. 
connect with us. Go yep. to ProStruck360.com. We, like I said, we we're giving this away to our podcast listeners for free if they're u- users of our software. Get into the software. Get on the complete version. Try it for two weeks for free. If you don't like it, you can downgrade to the free version. Yeah. But we give you the paid version for free to to test it out. Get in there, sign up for that, and set up a call with me or Jared, and we will walk you through this and kind of do a, a health check, and a, a company inspection, which is where we start with all of our coaching clients. Mm-hmm. And from there, if you're not ready for coaching, no problem. When Take you it. are, we'll be here. Take it right? and learn from it. Yeah. That's right. So we love to give this to you. Next week, we're going to dive into once you have this stuff set up, mm-hmm. what is the next thing we do? What's what, the next transition? How do I start mm-hmm. stabilizing the company to where I am getting to myself in a spot to be able to make the next hires? Yeah. And that's, that's what we'll cover next week. Any questions, we'd love to hear them. If you want to follow us on socials, we're on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, everywhere. Uh, and also, ProStruck360.com. You can go there and hit contact us. We'd love to hear from you if you got any Please questions yep. or suggestions for podcasts or anything else. We'd love to, love to interact with you guys there. Uh, and if you want to hear more about ProStruct Alliance, go to the website. Go to ProStruct Alliance on the website. Set up a call with me personally. I'd love yep. to have that conversation, tell you a little bit more about the program uh, and when it's ready for you, uh, wh- why we say yes to guys and why, you know, make sure that we're a good partnership mm-hmm. with them. Um, but we're yeah, here. It, we're here when you're ready. That's yep. right. That's right. Yep. So, all right. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you next week. See you. Bye.